Hello everybody, this is Matt with TechnoX Royalty Free Music, and I thought I would continue the weekend here with a little bit of um, kind of a basic uh, tutorial on how to make electro swing. So uh, what we've got here in front of me is the project file for the last one that I did. It's called Don't Mean a Thing, and I'll play it for you just right here. <laughs> all right yeah okay so th that's basically the beginning of it um it uses a sample from uh, a version by a guy named lionel hampton um most people are, are familiar with the version done by duke ellington and maybe one of these days i will get into that and do a version uh of the electro swing using uh, Duke Ellington's version of it don't mean anything um, but uh, I felt like this guy this guy had a, a great version so I basically made a song into it all right so just to go an overview of what's down here basically what we've got here is we've got three tracks that use the samples here um, I ended up layering a lot of the different parts here to kind of make a little bit more of a, a chaotic um, uh, basis for the actual track um, we also have a slam kit here and I'm going to go into the um, I'm going to go into the rack to show you the instrument that I've did um, one of these days I'm going to do a video on like the best instruments of the native instruments complete package that I purchased a couple months ago but uh, for now I'm basically showing you the drum set here which is taking over a lot of my stuff later as of late this is battery 4 and um, I cannot I cannot lend more praise to it than than I currently do it's it is a freaking awesome tool there's so many good kits here and it's got the I mean each each one of these like kits right here as you can see there's like quite a bit of it, but even even within a single kit, I've basically got at least two or three different like sets here that I can work with. So it's very, it's a very versatile tool, and it, there's like I've barely scratched the surface of what this thing that can do. And among other things that it has, it has like basically uh, options to basically um, you can basically. Um, uh, route outputs to different outputs of the instruments so you can do more with external effects here but as you can see it's it's um it sounds really good it's got a really good sound to it you can add different effects to it in in the uh instrument itself and then when you're done with that and you've got all the levels basically set to where you want them to you can addition like i said you can uh, route it out to different outputs of the instrument so you can process it further with other external effects here but it, it turns out with the the kit that i had i didn't really need to do any sort of external processing except for the usual thing that i do basically i put um i put a um a stereo spreader on there and then i've got basically some effects like this is my very comp another tool that i use a lot from the native instruments complete library it's basically the fairy compressor and it's set up as a, a very version of the drum bus here so and then i kind of like basically um scooped out a little bit of the high end there so the the symbols aren't uh the symbols aren't uh like basically uh drowning your ears out in really high painful treble and stuff like that so that's what i do and the name of the game for this kit right here if you want to do electro swing your drums should be really really subtle like it should basically be as natural as possible and then also just it, it it's barely above the rest of the instruments and that goes with the character of swing music in itself. In, in swing music, the the percussion is very very minimal, and it's 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 there to basically keep the beat, and um, it's just the it, it it doesn't like stick out like a sore thumb, 
And so if you hear a lot of the electro swing tracks, you can just barely hear the snare above everything else. And then maybe the kick as well. So that's, that's the one, one thing I'll, I'll say about the drums here. So, all right. So going down before we get into what we do with everything else, let's just, uh, move this up so we can have like a view of track one here. This is track one. We have, uh, also we have, uh, two upright bases here. Um, this was an experiment. It's not really very audible. Actually, this is the more audible one. This is, it's, it has a funny story because, uh, this is actually, uh, the real version of the, um, the upright bass that I was, um, using, um, it was the real version of this. And what I mean by that is, um, this was actually an East West instrument that I wasn't able to initially use because, uh, before a few months ago, reason wasn't able to use VSD instruments. And so I was kind of forced to basically extract some samples out, out of my uh, East West instrument to make a, um, uh, make a instrument itself. So that, that's what this is. So, um, right here, no, that's the drum bus. It would be, let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is what happened. So this is a contact is instrument that I've had for a while. It's upright based and I use it for other songs when I'm basically composing in Reaper. But, uh, I decided to try this out, um, into this song because, um, I've had, uh, since had the ability to use VSD instruments here, but, um, I found out that I didn't like it as much as, um, when I put the sample of this, this instrument up here into an NXT and I'm not sure why, like there's a lot more lower end here and it probably has to do something with the, the sample. I guess basically have just one sample here and it's basically, um, maybe the difference between, uh, uh, this and the multiple samples that are up here, it just ended up turning out better here because it's, it's only needed for the, the lower end. It doesn't really need much higher end here. Um, so yeah. All right. So the no other thing I have, this is where East West comes in and it's got a, it, it's basically where I'm able to use a Django guitar and I'll let you hear it here. So it's got a it, it's got a very jazzy feel to it. And ironically, this is not a jazz instrument. This is actually something that came with the um the Quantum Leap Gypsy series. So a lot of like um Eastern European instruments. But ironically, this guitar has been you I, I've used it a lot for like various things like rock and, and jazz and everything like that. And as you can see, just like the drums here, the effect here is supposed to be very minimal. Like I tried to get the, um, the, the strums to be as short as possible. So you can just barely hear it above everything else. Again, it's all about sub subtlety with, um, with the, um, it's all, it's all about subtlety with, with the instrumentation here. And, and we've got a little bit of glue here just basically glue tracks here and then some like risers to basically help with like the transitions and stuff like that. So, okay. So getting to the meat of it though, um, the, the major sections, the, the major parts are basically these, and this is, these are basically rearranged sections of the original track, which is up here. And this is the original, um, uh, track by Lionel Hampton. And I'm going to go and show you where I got this. And this is www.jazzonline.com. And uh, it's basically a repository of a lot of different old tracks from the 1920s, even as far back as 1907. A lot of these really old recordings that are public domain, by the way. Um, you can basically re research this site out and basically download for free hundreds of like tracks that uh, uh, people have basically uh, archived from like the the swing and the blues era here. 
and also ragtime as well. Some of these are broken links here, but uh, I think these are all broken links. Let me let me find a, a song that actually exists for you. All right, here you go. <laughs> Uh, a lot of this stuff is really awesome to listen to in their own right and everything. And as you can see, um, like I've got the entire track up here in this muted track. And there's a reason for this. This is basically what I started out with here at this top track, um, this orange track up here. And as you can see, a lot of this stuff is basically chopped up. And there's a reason for it. And that reason is that um, back in the day, they weren't so concerned about um uh tempo consistency obviously to a uh, degree they were but it, it's not like today where people are ex were ex they were not expected to basically mix their tracks into basically like a club mix right like if you're at a club and you're trying to mix a track then you've got to have like tracks that are really consistent with their tempos otherwise your dj would be train wrecking all day and then it wouldn't be a good show So, uh, uh, in that respect, like one of the biggest things that you're going to probably have to do when starting off is basically cut, like you have to adjust, first of all, your tracks to be kind of in a similar tempo as what you want down here, which this track is basically 115 beats per minute. Um, so basically what I did, um, when I started this track is I chopped this up and adjusted each measure, trying to figure out where each measure began and which each measure basically ended. And then uh, I would like basically drag and like adjust the, the time here so it would be faster or slower. Uh, and hopefully I would end up with like a perfect match for my tempo. So just for, for fun here. Hold on just a second. As you can see, that's really, it's really fast. Okay, so, but we can adjust it back in. Hold on just a second. And then you can actually, you can actually slow that down uh, by quite a bit too. So if I wanted to slow it down, then... As you can see, there's a certain point where like the audio starts to degrade, but um, with the range that we're adjusting by, especially these tracks end up, they started out as actually uh, a little bit slower than, than what I was using. But that's okay, because like if you try to slow these tr tracks down, you get a little bit of a degradation quality. And if you, sl if you slow them down enough, then that degradation in quality just it becomes where it, it's totally unusable, of course. Um, yeah, so basically what you do is you chop these up and then you find out the bits that you like. Because back in the day, uh, jazz instruments or jazz, jazz bands were a lot more, I would say, advanced. Uh, maybe not advanced is, I mean, maybe advanced is not the best word to use. But they, they, they rarely repeated a lot of things. And especially during the solo sections, um, there were sections in these songs where basically it was nothing but the, the, the instruments basically soloing, soloing over each other, uh, just basically uh, improvising their, lyric, uh, their, um, their melodies and stuff. And so a lot of things tended not to repeat each other. Whereas in a setting like this, um, you you have to actually repeat a lot of stuff and that makes a little bit more danceable in terms of modern times um and I, I would even say that these tracks right here are a little bit more complex than what a lot of people do because there a lot of people basically extract maybe maybe a one riff and then make an entire song about that so uh, let me just play like this song in its, you know, just kind of let it play out to let you give you an idea here. So. So you, 
you heard that that the saxophone there had a solo section and it's really good to listen to but it doesn't quite fit with like an electro swing or a electronic dance music theme so you find like you find out the stuff that's really it makes it a signature track and then you basically expand on the little riffs that basically make it the signature track if if that makes sense you basically expand on very simple parts of of the original track and then once you do that you basically can basically drag and drop like the pieces that you like into different parts here as you can see i'm going to unmute this i've got basically three different tracks here on the beginning part and basically what i'm doing there is i'm basically layering like the different parts that match each other and this allows me to kind of create a new canvas that is uh you know pretty much unique from the original work so as i i'll see i'll play all three of these tracks um in tandem and i'll mute these ones so you can see okay so hold on just a second okay so as you can see there's like uh, three different parts from three different points in this track right here um and in order to make the the entire mix sound more uh modern though we kind of process the track in a, um, in a few different ways here. Um, like, like I said earlier, some of the characteristics of these original co recordings, like uh, we were lucky in this instance here in that um, we did have um, uh, a stereo recording, but a lot of these tracks don't. Like you will get a lot of these swing tracks in basically mono. It will be straight up down the center and it, I, it both provides you with an opportunity to kind of basically make your own um, signature of sound, but it also is a challenge to kind of like find find out where those frequencies that, that you want to bring out in the mix are. And that's where this comes in. We basically put each track through a, a, um, a bunch of effects here. Basically what we've done is we've EQ'd out the bass here, and that's going to be for a good reason. One of the reasons is that uh, we do have a little bit of a, a bass here that we want to kind of get out of the mix, right? Because um, the the bass um, in, mod in, in jazz of that time basically had a 4-4 time. Basically, they were walking the bass. So it's more like doom, 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 doom. And in electro swing, the bass speed is about half the time so it's doom, 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 doom. as you can see I'll, I'll i'll show you here with the soling out of our our bass track here so so it's half it's half the time where um a normal bass in in a swing uh uh, music song of that era would be more like doom, 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 yeah, sort of like that. So, um, um, and but that that also makes room because the 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 Django guitar and the and the bass basically kind of play off from each other. They're kind of like this is the bass is more like the the kick drum, whereas the Django guitar is more like the hi hat where you're, it goes off on the offbeat here so right okay all right so with that in mind we want to basically cut out all the low end of the original track and um a lot of times we'll scoop out the mids here uh, on the 800 hertz area will kind of try and bring out a little bit more treble because a lot of the recordings back then had a very they didn't have as much treble to work with originally so you try and make um, it as good as possible 
And as you can see, there's a limit on what they actually recorded here. The the bandwidth looks like it's it was about 12 kilohertz here, whereas um, most modern songs will extend the bandwidth recordings out to uh, 25 kilohertz and beyond here. So you do that, we put a little bit of a bump here at 200 hertz. And uh, once we do that, um, the I put a unison of, uh, effect there to kind of if it if there is a stereo recording um, it'll it en it'll enhance the stereo recording by adding more voices and detuning those voices um, so you can get a little bit of more of a stereo spread but it's even more important if your samples are mono because it'll add stereo effects where there was none prior to that so and then we can use a stereo imager here to basically expand on that stereo image to kind of get it wide as possible. Um, now you guys don't need as much uh, reverb as you would think. Um, too much reverb and you would probably stick out like a store, sore thumb and the, the recording would sound a little bit more modern than you would like. And then obviously we'll put a little bit of a compressor out there and that would be one of the tracks right there as i uh, as i said before i've got three and one of the things that you can do to help the mix is to kind of pan these uh different tracks out in different directions uh for me uh track number one was panned a little bit to the left here as you can see uh track number two was panned just a little bit to the right and then the sample right here uh, this track number three I was using for like a little bit of like glue here so I put that all the way to almost like a little bit further to the right here and that's it that is basically what I did uh, so everything else here was basically arrangements and like I said you can see like the different riffs being played out here on each track right there um, one of the things that I have done to basically um, get around kind of like the sing-songy versions is I'll add a little bit of a transitional place here where different uh, there's a different um, ending or like the notation is a little bit different to kind of like transition into the next, uh, next uh, place here. But you can also use uh, these samples right here to basically do uh, transitional events here. I'll play that real quick. Okay, and you can see that um, with with that, where did I go? Oh, there I am. So with that, um, I used uh, this little sample right here to create a doubling effect where I I build up to the next section right here. All right, and so that that's how that's how we do it right here i'm pretty sure other people do it different ways but this is how i found um, myself making electro swing tracks and i hope you enjoyed that tutorial i hope it was instructional and um, i will see you guys next time